Thank you. Good morning. Glad to see everybody up bright and early. So part of what I do for a living is help people with their branding. And when you're working out your branding, a big part of that is user experience in your website. Um, you need to know who you're making your website for and what it needs, needs to do. <clears throat> so the most way pe most people start is by choosing a theme. Um, you know, you could build your own theme, but most people go shopping for a theme to get started out. So that's what I want to talk to you today is how to find a theme that works for what you need to do. So a theme is a collection of files that um, work together with the WordPress software that styles um, sh what shows you what things look like. Um, why you use a theme, it, it customizes your headers, your page templates, um, what your sidebars look like, all, make, what, basically what it looks like. Um, this is what it looks like with an unstyled theme, if it's just straight up, I think this is in Genesis, but there's no theme applied, that's with a theme applied. And it's a simple theme, but you can see where the logo's in there, the social media is up at the top, it's got a color theme. Uh, let's see. So the first thing you have to figure out is what kind of website you're building, um, who it's for, and what, the, what the, your the viewers need to see. This is an example of a magazine style website. If you are a blogger or you're an information provider and you want to get a lot of information right out of the get, you do something like this. Um, this is e-commerce. It showcases your products right on the, right on the screen. This is brochure style. This is just information about the business. Um, when you're looking for themes, you have options of free themes or premium themes. <clears throat> and um, there's a lot of things to take into consideration before you choose one. WordPress is open source, which means that anybody has access to the code to, to build upon. Um, so the free themes, sorry, I keep saying um. <laughs> so free themes are built on this code, and premium themes are also built on this code, but there's, a, there's proprietary styling that's included, and that's what they actually charge for. Pros and cons. When you're, when, I'm going to show you later where to go and find the free themes or the premium themes, but um, there's many, many, many free themes in the WordPress repository to choose from. They're often easier to customize, they don't have a lot of bells and whistles, and they're free. Cons are that because they're free, they're often not updated. WordPress changes its software often, and themes need to be updated to follow along. And if they're not updated, and you have an outdated theme in your, it can be, uh, it can get, um, break your site. So, and, and sometimes they're not as um, fancy in style. Premium themes are often supported because people pay for them. They are, there's money behind the coders who keep the, keep the updated. Um, there's a lot more flexibility and customization and the code is written better. The cons is that there, there are additional costs for the support. There's annual fees to, to keep them updated and they're not free. Your theme must be responsive. You have to make sure when you're choosing a theme that the code is written so that it shows good on a mobile device because Google will penalize you for that. That's just an example of what it looks like. When you're, in, when you're looking for themes, whether they're premium or free, check out what other people have to say about them. Um, you can usually find some sort of forum where there's comments or um, a rating system. This is what the this is where you would go to to the theme directory in the to find free themes. That that's what it looks like. And this particular theme has 40. It shows you in the repository how many active installs this theme has. It's got over 40,000 active installs. So there's 40,000 people who trust this theme. Um, and there's 139 five-star ratings. When you're shopping for themes, if you find a theme that has 
250 active installs and not a lot of great ratings, it, it's probably been tried and tested and you might want to keep looking. Themify is one of the places where you can go to get um, premium themes. There's elegant themes, there's a Genesis themes, places where you go and you buy it. You also can find information from other people who have used it to figure out if that's going to work for you. Page builders. Uh, if you guys heard Aaron Ryman talk yesterday about page builders, there's pluses and minuses. The biggest thing is that if you, if you use a theme that has a page builder and you ever want to change your theme, you could potentially have to redo your whole site because, the, because they're so reliant on the page builders. Um, they do make it very easy to design for beginners, so some people are attracted to that. And um, let's see what else. There's not a lot of coding required. You don't have to have a lot of coding knowledge to, if you pick the theme of a page builder. You know, but like I say, you could, and plugins have to be compatible. Let's see, child themes. If you're going to build a website and you're going to do any sort of customization to it, you should definitely install a child theme. I ha at the end of this slideshow, I have resources, I have links where you can go to learn to do all this stuff. Um, it's super easy to do a child theme. It's basically just two files that gets installed. You activate it just like you activate a regular theme and you put all of your customizations in there. That way, if you ever change your theme or when you update your core theme, you don't lose your customizations. If you make all the customizations right inside of your core theme, you will have to do them again. Um, this is an example of what it looks like in the back end. I have Genesis installed and then a custom child theme on top of it. And if you, if you deactivated the child theme and just activated Genesis, it would lose all the styling of the site. It would just go back to plain black and white and boring. Um, Plug-in compatibility. If you're building an e-commerce website and you want to use something like WooCommerce, you have to make sure that your theme is compatible with that plugin that you want to use because there are special page layouts that are required in order to um, use that software. Uh, any of these, any of these plugins that you want to use, your theme, when you're looking for your theme, make sure it says that it's compatible with, with the plugin that you'd like to use. Other things to consider. You want to make sure it's SEO optimized. A big part of that is in the coding and you wouldn't know it. I have links at the end of places where you can go and run your site through and it will check. It'll check the code and, and rate the SEO optimization. Navigation options. You want to make sure that when you're designing your site that the theme has options for very clear and easy to understand navigation because that's one of the biggest things that a user they will leave your site quicker if they can't figure out how to find what they need. So navigation is super important. Um, make sure it has social media integration where somewhere there's a way for you to put your social media links and have them show up as, as buttons because you know you want that cross traffic. The short codes, if, if, if the theme runs on short codes, which they often do, it's similar to page builders. And if you build it using the short codes that they write into the theme, and then you change your theme, you're going to lose all of your customization. And rebuilding the pages is, you know, time consuming. So that's just a consideration. And the same thing goes for web widgets. Some, some themes come with custom widgets that allow you to put certain things in certain places, and it's theme specific. Uh, resources. I just put together a list of um, places where you can go to get more information about all of the stuff. I don't. I feel like I'm talking really fast. <laughs> so, if and I'm almost through my slides. So I guess we're going to have a lot of time for questions. Um, these themes are upload. I mean, these slides are uploaded on the on the Slack channel for this talk. Um, it's there. Sunday, 9 a.m., Nikki Pink is the Slack channel. They're also on SlideShare. 
Oh, oh, and the link is in Slack as well, uh, in SlideShare. And so, any questions? Yeah. So if I'm looking to get a thing out of a repository, and I, I want to, and I'm not sure if it fits my business, what are some questions I should ask myself about? Okay, so if you're, so if you're designing um, a theme for, say, a motel, what do your customers want to see when they when it opens up? They want to make they want to see a box that says "Book Now" or "What's Available," a picture of the hotel. So when you're thinking about the theme, you want to make sure that you have the elements that your customer wants to see. If you're doing e-commerce, you want to have it so that you they immediately can see samples of your products. If you're doing a theme for, um, um. I need an example. Sorry? Pet sitting. pet sitting? Okay, so pet sitting would have what you want to see immediately what you do. There should be a, a place for a header so that you can see a picture. And then maybe there's a box that says book now or schedule now that leads to a, an appointment calendar or call us now or. Does that help? What I love the most about Genesis is that you have to use a child theme. So Genesis is called a framework. It's a it's a theme, but it's it's a very naked this doesn't have any styling. So you have to put a child theme in order to style your scene, but that framework is always the foundation. So no matter how often you update the framework, your styling always stays, and it makes it very easy to change it. Genesis has great code. It's written well. And um, um, so I use it a lot. I don't use it for everything because I, I like a little bit more design freedom sometimes. But I do like themes that are a framework. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. Uh, what, what are some things that are WooCommerce compatible? Because I've heard Genesis things are compatible with WooCommerce. I don't actually do a ton of e-commerce. Um, in when I have done WooCommerce sites, I buy my themes from Woo because then I know for a fact they're Woo, they're Woo compatible. But I do, I have worked on other client sites where they've already had it installed and it's, it's worked okay. So if, as long as it says it's Woo compatible, you, I, would, I would at least try it. I'm sorry? There's a plugin for WooCommerce for Genesis that's called Genesis Connect. That, that makes it compatible? Okay, cool. Yeah. What you call X? Of, of the X theme? I love the X theme. I, I use it a lot for everything. Um, I don't think I'm actually supposed to technically recommend anything, <laughs> but it it works. So so X is a huge. It's one of those themes that's huge and it has a tons of bells and whistles. For a lot of my clients' purposes, they don't build gigantic sites, so the page load isn't. Even though it's a really big theme, it's not a really big site. So. It, and it just the amount of styling opportunities that it offers is so I mean I personally like them developers will argue with me all day long that they're no good there's a theme so there's there's themes that you can buy there's one called X there's one called Jupiter there's one called Avada and they're themes that it's 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 a framework style theme that, and you have, but what they did is they took a theme and then they built a whole ton of sample pages. Like sample, it basically they, they did the customizer for you. And they show you demos and then you can install their sample pages. But because the, the customizer options are so vast, it, the design options are crazy what you can do with them. But they're big, they're big themes. They're big and they're a little bloated and there's stuff in there that you don't need and there are, there's an argument to be made for the fact that that's not ideal for your page load. If you have a huge site or if you have a, a ton of media that's already going to make your page load slow, then you might want to pick a, a theme that's got a little cleaner code. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, 
ask the theme builder. Usually they know because the I think the plugin developers um, can't keep in touch with them. So if it's something that you if there's only one plugin that you can use for what you're trying to accomplish, then I would reach out to a theme developer and ask them if it's compatible. Because a lot of times they'll just look at the code and they'll tell you whether it is or not. But oftentimes, if one plugin doesn't work, another one might. And sometimes it's just trial and error. Oh, hi, sorry. <laughs> She's pointing, but I couldn't see where. <laughs> So okay, so the question is is when you're shopping for a theme, it they they present it a certain way when they're selling it, and then when you install it and you look at your site, it looks nothing like the demo theme that they that they have up. The theme developers will style out a theme to sell it. They usually offer the um, the customizations, which is available through a file that's an XML file. And you can download it, and usually it says something like import the demo content. If they have different pages that are available, you can choose the page, and it'll populate your site with either dummy content, but all the styling will be there. And then you can sort of, based on what they did in the demo thing, you can customize it further for your own needs. Is that, was that what you were asking? Okay. Yeah, also on Studio Press, you can go to the developer's page, and they'll show you, like, here's how we did that header, Here's what we use for this slider, and they'll, they'll like walk you right through it. And it's very clear. That's another thing I would pay attention to when you're shopping for a theme. Try to find their documentation. Try to find if um, the people who develop the theme have YouTube tutorials or or step-by-step -step guides on how to do different things. Because because the, the theme will have a whole list of features that they are available. So if one of the features is um, an integrated calendar booking system. The feature is there, but if you don't know how to customize it or configure it, you're going to be lost. So the, check out the documentation and make sure that they have instructions to help you through that. Yeah. So Nikki, I, the, the title said like how to choose a theme. I don't know how do you. What is your mindset like when you meet with a client mm -hmm. and you go out and kind of narrow down maybe a site plan and figure out the scope of the. What is your process to show? Demo themes? Do you select something? Uh, how's your procedure with a client? Well, because my my relationship with a client usually starts with the branding process. By the time we get through that, I've got a pretty good idea of what their what goals they're trying to hit with their website. So the way that I do it is is we define the pages that they need in their website, and then we figure out a goal for each one of the web pages. So the home page. If you're, um, say you're a public speaker, and your homepage's goal is to capture the emails of people who are interested in having you speak at an event, I, I personally sketch it out on paper, and, and I figure out what, what does somebody need to see to achieve that goal, and then I go out, well now I do much more custom stuff. You know, now I, I work with things where I can just build the thing myself, but if I was going out looking for a theme, I would search through themes that had the elements on the, that I needed. Does that help? At what point do you show the client, like, sort of a rough model, like, I installed this theme, here's these dummy pages, how, at what point do you let them take a peek and see what you've done? Um, it's on when it's almost done. We've gone through colors, we've gone through fonts, we've gone through um, the feel and tone that they're looking for, we've gone through their message that they want, um, we've talked about the pages that are going to be on their website, and then usually by that point we have a pretty, uh, that no like trust relationship, and then I pretty much go in and build out the site, and then when, it, when I have it all built out as I envision it, I show it to them and then we tweak. We figure out what neat works for them. You've never had any kind of hiccups with that. I mean of course. A lot of everybody has hiccups. But primary I've never had anybody say, absolutely not, let's reinvent the wheel. That's never happened. 
because I spend so much time up front working with them, I already know, I end up knowing what they want more than they know by the time we get to it. But that's a, that's a, that's a web a designer client relationship. Some people are just trying to do this for themselves. So in that case, I would do that work up front, figure out what you need from your website, and then go and find a, the, the theme that works best for you. Does that help? Yeah. Well, yes, but you're probably going to, well, let's see. What you could do is you, once you install, because the, your child theme is, is, your, is a style sheet and a function sheet. So if you have customizations built into your main theme, you can actually copy and paste that CSS code exactly as it is into your child theme. And then if your main theme updates, your child theme would override it. The only thing I would be careful about is you don't want your entire website's CSS in your child theme. You just want to try to just pick out what you've changed. But yeah, that's a way to do it after the fact. Yeah. Um, I have heard repeatedly that should make the CSS changes in a child theme. When I sat down with a developer yesterday, he suggested rather than put together a child theme, to as much as possible um, use the per page CSS modifications, which won't be overwritten. And it's less complicated, especially for folks like me just start out. Yeah, so that's true. That's very true until you change your theme and it doesn't have per page CSS. Well, there are plugins available for that. Okay. I've never used one, but if that's the case, then I would assume that's how it would work. So the plugin is basically acting as your child theme. Uh, on a per page basis. Right. Sure. Yeah, I think it's six of one half dozen of the other, probably. You mentioned I'm having your child name contain all of the CSS codes. Mm -hmm. So we have five right that has the majority of what we want. We just need to do a little tweaking. That's kind of how you know about it. Yes. Basically, we build the whole site. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're choosing a theme, if you're not going to build a theme from scratch, so the question was, if I understand correctly, um, you, finding a theme that has the, the style sheet that, you, that looks basically what you want and then just making little tweaks, right? Yeah, so um, if you're not going to design it from scratch, then yes, that's, that's what you'd want to do. You, you'd go shopping for a theme that basically looks... It doesn't even need to necessarily look the way you want it to look. It has to have the, the features that you need. Because you can change a website drastically by doing different colors and changing the header. You know? So, um, and that's the kind of stuff. Those color changes and font changes are stuff that you put in your child theme. You mentioned, um, you mentioned the X theme. Mm -hmm. No, that's a standalone theme. Yeah, that's a premium theme that you buy by itself. Yeah. So, so, why if you're designing, why are you de the developers not building the theme from scratch based on your design? Okay, so if so, the question is, if you're a website designer who hands over the design to a developer, how would you choose a theme in that case? Um, most developers, if that's all they do and they're working with independent designers, they usually write their own themes. So as the designer, you would do page layout, which would include the elements that you need, and then you would leave that up to the developer to decide how he wants to do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, the theme functionality of the theme layout and what I can edit with plugin. Like, I like this, but 
You, you can get pretty specific with themes, it's just that it could take you a really long time to find one. So one of the beautiful things about Genesis is it's really naked and then you work with plugins. The, the issue with having too many different plugins is they're, they're written from different by different companies with different coding styles. So oftentimes if you have too many trying to work with each other, something's incompatible and it'll break your site. Um, you also don't want to have too, too many plugins because it makes, every time somebody calls the page and it opens up, it takes, it's a lot of information to load, it makes your site slow. So if the functionality is built into the theme, chances are it runs a little bit more efficiently than if you had a whole bunch of plugins doing it. So it's kind of a, you know, but if it's a functionality that you absolutely don't want to lose, if you ever change your theme, then I would go with a plugin. How's my time? Everybody have a question? No? Okay. What is your go-to? When you're not using a page builder for Genesis, do you have a third choice? I use the X theme. Uh, uh, and I, I don't think I'm supposed to recommend anything, but that is I use the X theme for at least half of my sites. Is it X theme? Um, it's, I think it's $63 per license, but you do have to buy a license for every single site you install it on. Yep. Compared X to uh, you design? No, I don't know what you design is. It, it's another very full feature theme along the lines of that. Okay. Yeah, X has its own, uh, just one sec, X, X has its own community. They have their own some conferences like this, they're very, very proactive with the development of it. Um, there's some, some pretty great people behind it. And the, what it does, the functionality of it is just, as a website designer, it makes things very easy and efficient. I can get a lot done with it. If there was somebody, yeah. Um, the, the other big themes that, that have that, all that sort of, the ones I know of, there's one called Avada, there's one called Jupiter, um, Divi, of course, Divi. I, I haven't used Divi myself yet, but it's similar, it, the, the functionality, that that's from Elegant Themes. Hey. Have you ever used uh, Thesis theme? I've not used Thesis. I've heard great things about it, but I've not used it. Yeah, I haven't used it. I, from what I understand, that's a that's a real. Um, the developers love that theme because the way the code is written. But from a designer standpoint, I don't know if it's so easy to use. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't anymore. But when I started, I did. When I was starting working with with these themes, um, these big themes, I would find one that I liked and I would import all the demo content. That's a really good way to learn how to work the theme. Because once the information is there and you just have to figure out where to change it, it then you learn how to just do it yourself. I'm sorry? She was asking if when, if I, when I install a theme, if I import all the demo content. I don't do that anymore, but when I started, I did. Because it was a good way to learn all of the possibilities. Yeah. X theme has a page builder that's packaged with it called Cornerstone, and I think as of this week they're releasing it as a standalone plugin that you can use with other themes. And Cornerstone, Cornerstone is a page builder. The reason it's different is because when you're in the back end, instead of you know Visual Composer and Divi, you see the boxes, and the box says there's an image here. Cornerstone as a page builder shows you the whole picture. So your back end is broken up into blocks, but it's, you actually see exactly what's in it. So if you have a, say for instance, you have a contact form that's in one of your, in your blocks, it shows the actual contact form. So for, for, so for designing, it makes it very fast. 
No one else? Oh, yep. It's the letter X. Yep, it's, it's developed by a company called ThemeCo. That's it? Sometimes I just Google. I'll Google what's the best theme for a speaker. And some, somebody has probably done a, these are the top 10 themes for a speaker. And then I'll go through them one by one and I'll be like, no, oh, maybe not that one. Oh, no, they don't have good ratings. Oh, you know what I mean? And just, just narrow it down that way. But if you're not, but if, you, but if it's a topic where you can't just necessarily theme, uh, Google something, pay attention to what functionality it needs to have and the ratings. Those are what I say are the two most important things. Okay, so I'll be around all day. I'll be here till the end of the day. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to come up and ask me. Um, I'm going to be in the happiness bar at some point. My slides are available on the Slack channel and I would love to give you a URL, but I don't know how to do that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tweet it the URL to the slides if anybody's interested so you have the resources and stuff. Okay, cool. Thank you.